For this lesson, we're going to look at how to sort and organize a large group of data. Uh, in this case, we have pulse rates of randomly selected males, and our data are listed right here. The first step that we're going to do in this is to sort the list. So we have our original values here, but you can see they're not in any particular order. So we're going to sort those from smallest to largest, and we can do that just like this. I'm going to head the column, just call it sorted, and then I'm going to highlight the data, do a right mouse click, copy, do another right mouse click, and choose paste. Now I have a duplicate from the original data set, and it's still selected, which is what I want to do. I'm just going to go up here on Excel then and quickly sort the data. Excel asks me uh, if I want to sort the data next to it as well, and in this case I just want to continue with the current selection. Now this list is a lot easier to work with. And one of the ways you can sort data is by creating something called a stem and leaf display. The stem is the first number and the leaf, the leaves, are the second number. So in this case what I'm going to do is simply make my stems anything that starts with a 5, a 6, a 7, an 8 or a 9. And then the leaf values will be the second part of, of this um, value. So for example, I have a 55. So 5 is the stem. 5 is the leaf. I also have a leaf of 6, 8, and another 8. In the case of the 6s, I go 60, 64, 67, 69. For 70, is 71, 78, another 78. And then for 80, I have 86, 88, another 88. And then when I get into the 90s, I have a 0, 4, 5, 7, 7, 8, 8. Basically what I've done here is create a, um, a sort of a, a representation of the data that gives me an idea of how many values there are in each of these categories. And I can further sort this data by saying if I go from 50 to 59, oops, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and then 90 to 99. And I have four values in here. I have four values here, three here, three here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values there. I have all together. Uh, I have 21 values, and if I go over here just to double check and select all of these, down at this part it also tells me that I had 21 values. So that's all. that all makes a lot of sense. So I can call this the range. This is the count within each range. And then I can do something uh, that gives me the percentage of values within each range. And what I'm doing here is creating something called a frequency distribution. So I have four values out of 21 in this range. And again here, because I want to copy this formula down <clears throat> to other cells, I'm going to make this a fixed cell reference by hitting function key 4 putting dollar signs around the column and dollar signs around the row. And then I'm going to change this to a percentage. So 19% of the values are there, 19 here, 14, 14, and 33% of the values. At this point it gets fairly easy for me to create actually a um, uh, what's called a, a chart or a histogram of these values. To create the histogram I can simply select the values, go to insert, 
bar chart or column chart. Choose the first column chart. And what you see is I can very, very easily create a histogram, a bar chart of all of these values. Now, in addition to all this, I might want to know the average and the standard deviation of this set of values. So the average is equal average, and then just select the values. The standard deviation is equal STDEV, select the values. And so I, I also have a way to describe the data set. And I would say this, the pulse rates of my randomly selected uh, males, the average or the mean pulse rate is 78.3, the standard deviation is 15.9, that's a fairly wide dispersion of rates. And I'm just going to knock the decimal down, knock the decimal points down a little bit just to make this a little bit easier to see. This is a, a good way to analyze data, uh, especially large number, large sets of data. It's uh, valuable in giving us an idea of how the data are distributed across various types of ranges.